Hello everyone, it's Wilson here. Today, let's talk about graphing the screw with function. In fact, I actually want to use this video to just talk about the general basics of the, um, the screw with function here to know its shape and also know its domain and the range. Because after this video, I'm going to make a series of videos talking about graphing different types of screw with functions using transformations based on this. So, that's why I'm going to just graph this one first. And so for graphing this one, I'm just going to simply just plot points and to do the graphing. Okay, so we are going to start by constructing a table. So we are going to just make a table here and then just make a table with x, y values in it. So we are going to just start by the left column, which is the x, and then the right column is the y. Okay, so now we have this. Um, so first, let's try um, a, the simplest value, which is uh, zero. Okay, so if we try to plug in the zero into the x, then we are going to get what? We are going to get the square root of zero. So basically just plug the zero into the x, and then we are going to get square root of zero, zero. So we get the order pair is zero comma zero. Okay, so we are going to just plot that point, which is right here. So that's that's zero, zero. And then we are going to try the next one, which is the one. And then, well, that is also a perfect square. So take the square root of one. We are going to just get the one here. So our next point is going to be one, one, as you can see. Okay. And then now the next one, the next one, what is the next one? The next one, well, we're going to try two. So we plug in the two into the square root, then we are going to get the square root of two. And then you may say, what is square root of two equal to? We can actually just use a calculator. So we are going to do square root of two, which will give us 1.414213 and so on, right? So we can simply just use uh, 1.41. Okay. So we can just write 1.41 right here. Yeah, so that's 1.41. So our point is going to be two and then, so two in the X direction and then 1.41 in the Y direction, right? So we are going to get one is right here, two is right here, and then 1.41, which is uh, almost 1.5, right? So we are getting a point here. And as you can see that I'm just approximating. And then the next one is going to be three, and then we are going to get what? Well, let's try to compute this one. So we are going to get um, the square root of three, and then we are going to get one point uh, seven three. So we are going to get 1.73 and this one is actually the square root of three, as you can see. So 1.73 is closer to the two. So for the three right here, it's 1.73. So it's right here at this point, as you can see here. And then the next one is a perfect square. So we are going to get, what is that square root of four, which would give us a two so that we have a Y value of two and an X value of four. So we get zero and then one, two, three. Well, it actually makes it more difficult to count. So I'm going to just, just label the axes first. I mean, the label, the scale first so that it will be easier for us to see what's going on. So we're gonna get zero, one, two, three, four, five, right? As you can see, like the one on the other side. Like the two, like the three, like the four, like the five. And then here we are going to get zero, one, two, three, four, five, and then negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five. Yeah, so that's, um, after labeling, it makes it a lot easier to read. So now I'm going to just continue. Okay, as you can see that the next one is four, two, so four is right here, and then two is here. So we're gonna get this point here. Now start, um, if we connect those points, then we can actually get the, uh, the curve for the square root function. But I, um, since my x, y plane can still show x equals five, so I'm going to just plot one more point there. What happens is that we are going to get what is that square root of five? What is square root of five equal to now? Well, let's do the calculator. So we are going to get two point. Uh, two four, so two point two four, or you can think of that as about like two point two two point three. So at five, at x equals five, we have two point two four. So it's, it's here, as you can see. So now, what do we do? We are going to um, we are going to make the we are going to make the curve. We're going to make the curve, and it's 
this is our square root function. And then you may say, what about the uh, the left side of the y-axis? What happens? Um, if you think of it, the regarding the shape, right? If you just plug in, uh, let's say you plug in the negative x value. So let's say try negative one. Then we are actually going to get what? Square root of negative one, as you can see. This is actually imaginary. So we are not going to be able to plot it in the, in the plane with just real numbers. So we have what? We have nothing to plot on the side. And actually, if you plug in any other negative numbers, we actually will have, uh, a complex number for the y, so we will not be able to plot anything here. And so as you can see that this is a positive square root function, so as you can see that there is nothing below the x-axis also. Okay, so that is the general shape for the curve. Yeah, so that's that's for the, the graph for the function. Now, we also want to talk about the range in the domain, so we don't need to calculate it anymore. Let me close that. Now, how do we find the domain? Um, regarding the domain, we can actually just simply just look at the graph of the function. As you can see that it starts from zero and then it goes all the way. Well, there is no limit on how big the x value that you can plug into this function. You can plug in one trillion, 10 trillion and so on, right? So you can see that the function will just keep going. So we are going to have the domain of zero, okay, to infinity. And you can see that zero is being included because the function is defined as zero. So we're going to use brackets right here. But then for infinity, we will always use parentheses. And what about the range? Now, regarding the range, what happens? We are going to just look at the, um, the graph. And so you can see that the lowest point for the graph, it's actually having a y value zero because as we mentioned before there was nothing below the x-axis so the lowest point for the range will still be zero and then what about the upper bound well the graph as you can see that as x increases the y will also increase even though the graph goes like this but it's still going up and up and up and so on right so what happens is that we are going to get what we are going to also get infinity for the range so that's the domain that's the range and they are the same but for other square root functions they're not necessarily the same just keep that in mind okay so that's it for this problem and then we are going to talk about uh transformations to do the graphing next time using this basic function. Okay, so I'll see you. Bye.